Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for Imagined Plants. Now, back in the 1970s, when environmental protection and conservation first became widespread concerns, the book The Lorax was written by Theodore Seuss Geisel, under the pen name of Dr. Seuss. In the book, Dr. Seuss imagined truffle trees as colorful, useful plants that were part of a well-functioning ecosystem. There were other forms of life that depended on them. Once the trees were removed, the other parts of the ecosystem disappeared as well. Now that story is as timely today as it was 50 years ago. So let's take a cue from Dr. Seuss and imagine our own plants. This is kind of a fun project because they can be made from just about anything you happen to have laying around. And it's really special if you can use materials that you can recycle to create your plant. Now plants are all different, but they do share common physical properties and this is one way that we can learn about them. For instance, plants often begin from a center stem or trunk. We're gonna use a wooden dowel perhaps. Um, these have been made very colorful with a little bit of marker. To make it stand, there's, I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can do that. You could take a recycled container, like I have this yogurt cup right here, fill it up with some scrap paper. I've started by just putting a few pieces of uh, paper towel in here because that's what I happen to have on hand. We could also use perhaps some of those paper shreds. And if you just kind of fill it up like this, then take your glue and just kind of cover the surface around like this, get it up against the dowel especially, and then set that aside to dry, then that's gonna hold that in place. Now some of the other things that you could use to hold the stem upright, we could use a styrofoam block. Some other things you could use, of course you all have packing material probably, you save some pieces. We have these misshapen uh, odd pieces like this, and you could use perhaps a popsicle stick to stick that in, scratch sticks come with a point, perfect to stick in for a stem. You could even use a straw perhaps, like this plastic straw, piece of wire, rolled up piece of paper or a pencil. You could even go out and find a stick in the backyard to use. From the stem, leaves develop. Now leaves collect the light for the plant to turn into energy. So they're very important. They also exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide. We often think of leaves as being green, but leaves can look blue, yellow, red, even purple. You can create leaves and then perhaps wrap them around the dowel. But leaves could be made from just about anything. I'm gonna show you just a brief technique, <laughs> we'll say, but a way to create a leaf from felt. I've cut a strip folded it in half, and now I'm gonna cut just a leaf shape so that I'm gonna get two sides at one point. And then if you wrap that around and tie it on the dowel, you get a leaf that comes off each side of the plant. Another part of the plant that we usually don't think a whole lot about because we don't see it is the root system. Roots are there to bring water and minerals up out of the ground into the plant, and they also support it. Some of the things we could use to make roots is we could perhaps use a little bit of ribbon or string. Of course, the wires, these, these are a good thing to poke right into the styrofoam and create roots around the bottom of the plant with. We have uh, some yarn. With styrofoam, you can actually take little bits of yarn and then a sharp pencil or stick or tool and you can poke into the styrofoam like this to get it to stay no glue required. Hey, how about those leftover paper shreds again? Those could be glued on to make root-like pieces around the bottom. Last thing, every plant has a way to create new plants. And often these are the most colorful and attractive part of the plant. Flowers, for instance, attract pollinators like bees. And fruit contains seeds. This is just a little origami foil, imaginary flower, that I can just add to my plant like this. Beads, of course, remind me of seed pods. So you could gather some large or wooden beads and use those. And you can create a seed pod. This is just a little stuffed piece of fabric. Pom-poms, I love some pom-poms because they just remind me of those fluffy spores like you would find on a dandelion or something like that. Combs, 
shoots, those are all reproductive tools and parts of a plant. So after you'd create a plant, and of course mine is not finished, I would come back and work on that later, I can communicate information about my imaginary plant through the use of a plant stake, like a label or a tag. Let me just bring this one over here, and it has a tag already attached to it. Now some of the tags that you might find on a plant in a plant market, um, usually it would include a photo or a drawing and to let you know what the, the mature plant is going to look like. It gives the plant's name and perhaps a nickname that it might have. It tells you how to care for the plant and how much water or sunlight it might need. And then it also tells you when to expect results in the form of fruit or flowers. We can also imagine the value our plants might have to humans and to other organisms. What part does your plant play in an ecosystem? For example, uh, this little plant right here, this is a pom-pom plant, the polka dot pom-pom plant. We have a fiery fern that provides warmth and shelter to small animals in cold climates. We have the Brussels bead plant here that produces all the beads that we use in our craft projects. We have a spider plant and of course the glitter plant that creates sap that is used to create glitter glue. It's a lot of fun. Remember, use your imagination just like Dr. Seuss did. What can you do with an imagined plant? Well, hold a plant sale or decorate with it. I know one thing I am not going to do with my plant. Water it. Learn more about this project and hundreds more like it at dickblick.com lesson plans. Thank you for joining me and I hope you make a wonderful imagined plant.